What's going on YouTube? This is Big Pencil coming at you again with a nut. I can't remember if I've done a video on all of my mounts or not. So I'm going to take you around and show you all the mounts that I got in the house. You know, I've uh, killed a lot of nice bucks over the years that I wish I would have got mounted. But, you know, mom and daddy didn't have a lot of money, you know, coming up when I was younger. and killed a lot of the nicer bucks that I killed. So I just got the memories of them. But, you know, we had dogs to take care of, bills to pay, so I understand, you know, what, no big deal. But when I got old enough to start mounting a few things, I mounted some stuff. And I'll take you along and show you what I got. I've got a couple of new ones that I just got. Well, I got one real new one. I ain't had it, but about a month or so now. So, uh, let's go along and show you what we got here. This here, that is the first deer that I ever got mounted. I was 18 years old. I killed him down at my dog club. He is a 10 point, full velvet. And uh, you know, this, this buck here, it was the second Saturday of the season. I was down in the swamp, my, one of my most favorite places to be, down there in the middle of the creek. And just so happens, our dogs jumped it up and run it straight to me. I mean, they was trailing. I could hear them trailing for a while. And finally they got up there and he just had enough. He was laying right on the edge of that creek. He probably wasn't laying 80 yards from me. And just when they stepped on him, he jumped up and ran straight to me. And I, I threw the gun up, shot, missed him the first shot, and then had to whip it around the tree that I was sitting next to and shot him again on the second shot. And he folded right up. Let's see. You can actually see the buckshot pellets in the back of his neck right there where I shot him. He didn't take a step. Once I hit him, he was done. But, uh, you know, I got him mounted from a guy that done it kind of on the side. He did a real good job. You know, I, I like the way it turned out. But, you know, that was my first one that I got done up. And then the second one that I got done up was the big boy here. This is my big 10. I killed him on Thanksgiving Day. Probably... That's been five years ago now, I believe, when I killed that buck. I foot jumped that sucker up. Me, my daddy, my brother was all driving at our dog club. And uh, another good friend of mine was, he was uh, less than 100 yards away from us, and that was the end of the line. And a guy had already walked in there and walked that area before. And he had to walk within 20 yards of him and he never moved. And I just so happened to step right on top of him. That sucker was in some broom sage in a field about, you know, I'm 6'2". And it would have probably come up to here. You know, waist high broom straw. I don't know how I didn't see his horns, you know, laying up in there. But that sucker jumped up right underneath my feet. And I'm going to tell you, when you get one that big jumping up like that in front of you, it's an adrenaline rush. One shot, boom, he cut a flip. I was so jacked up, went to hollering and stuff. You know, everybody else couldn't see him, of course, till they got right up on top of him. But, you know, that was, that's probably my, one of my biggest bucks that I've ever killed. I got him scored at the, uh, the Grand American, not the Grand American, the uh, Sportsman's Classic they have every year down here. I got him scored. And he come up at 121 inches. I said, yep, four inches too short, the story of my life. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. He's still a nice buck. I don't think anybody would have passed up on him. And this one here was probably, this is one of my most favorite bucks that I got on the wall. You know, he might not be much to look at point-wise. He ain't but a seven point. He's got some little rinky-dink points and stuff. But this is the first buck that are uh, the first day that I ever killed on a drive with Callie, with my young and little Slim. It was the first one that I ever killed on a drive with her, dog driving, your man driving, anything with a shotgun. And uh, I killed that buck, a six point, and another knothead buck after that. So I killed three that day, and that's actually on one of my videos. Y'all seen me kill this one if you've watched for a while. But, uh, you know, I went ahead and got him mounted because, you know, that memory means more to me than any, any, scorable point that you could ever have you know they i got this one and that one done by the same guy and uh, they do a real good job cordray's i think he's out of charleston 
is where they where they are from but yeah they do a real good job on the deer head mounts and uh you know i don't know how much he weighed he probably would have went you know it was late season it was like the last week of the season he might have weighed 170 pounds i think he was right around about 170 pounds and that one there was probably 180 or so you know they don't they don't get real real big around here until you get a real big fat old buck and get one over 200 pounds that's one thing i have not yet to do i've killed a lot of them over the years but i've never killed one over 200 pounds so i guess that's my next bucket list there to get all right we're going over here to some of these fish this is actually the newest one i got this is a shell cracker that i caught out of santee i caught him about a month and a half or so ago and you know i've caught thousands of fish in my lifetime and this is the biggest shell cracker that i've ever caught you know the, i weighed him he was two pounds eight ounces he was right at two and a half pounds and uh, i took him to the guy up here in uh columbia west columbia up there and got him to mount him for me it took him about a week and a half and he called me and said the fish was ready and I, he did a real good job on him yeah that's my newest one that i just got back but he's real pretty i had to get him mounted and i don't know if i'll ever catch another one that big then i got me a bass i don't know if you can see him he's up there kind of high on the wall i caught that bass when i was nine eight or nine years old caught him on a zebco 33 with old zoom u-tail worm pumpkin seed fire tail you can't beat him i caught that thing on a zebco 33 that had 10 pound line on it and we weighed him he was nine pounds 11 ounces he was right under 10 pounds and uh, daddy got that one mounted for me and you know, it's funny a couple years later you know like i say we didn't have a whole lot of money growing up and i caught one we used to fish they had a, a tournament it used to be the rose festival you know in Augsburg every year we used to fish the rose festival bass tournament every year and uh well we got got into a pond that was absolutely stacked with big bass i'm talking about absolutely full of them and me and daddy come in fourth place in that tournament one year with like 38 39 pounds or something like that between 10 fish and uh well i caught one a few weeks before it was like 12 and a half pounds biggest bass i've ever caught huge bass and daddy didn't want to get him mounted he didn't have the money so we turned him back loose and i have yet to catch him again but i don't fish in that pond anymore so but it is what it is i still remember that fish caught him on the exact same setup zebco 33 with a u-tail pumpkin seed fire tail worm all right we come around over here to the the drake mallard that was my first drake mallard that i've ever killed y'all have seen him on a video when i went to arkansas for the first time killed him on the second day five minutes before legal shooting light was over he come in to the to the old mojo dove it was the only decoy we had out he come landed just about landed on top of it it took me almost two years to get them ducks back but i finally got them back now i'm thoroughly pleased with the way he turned out he got his old curly Q, curly Q on his tail back there. He done a real good job with him. I like my mounts. Now we come on in here to the bedroom. That's my other duck. That's my green wing teal. Old Drake green wing teal. I killed him three years ago on Santee out there hunting with a friend of mine. I killed him one day during that uh, first part of the season. It was the only duck we killed that day. But I was tickled to death to get him. I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put him on the wall, too. It ain't cheap to get ducks done up anymore, but, you know, you only you only kill certain ducks one time. This one here, this buck, it was actually Daddy's buck. Daddy killed this buck probably before I was born. And uh, he got him put on a plaque. And he had him laying around in the shed and stuff. Said, I ain't going to do nothing with it. So I said, well, hell, don't throw it away. I'll take it and hang it up in the house. And, you know, I'll keep it. I mean, he was a, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He was a 10 point. He had some busted up points. You know, he tell he had been, he had been fighting a good bit. I don't know exactly where he killed him at. I know he was at the dog club when he killed it. But come over here on top to save this is actually the first buck that i've ever killed with a bow 
This is the first buck that I've ever killed a bow and arrow. He's a nine point. If you count this one little kicker point coming out the front of his horn, I count it. You know, as far as it being a legal point, I don't know. But I don't care. You know, he was a real tight rack buck. But he was a big one. And I actually didn't find him for three days. I hit him kind of far back. Didn't make the best shot on him. And I let him sit for a couple hours. I looked and looked and looked for that thing. Man, had daddy out there. My other buddy, we looked for that thing. For my God, I know it was three and a half hours that night. And we had tracked him about 100 yards. And we just lost blood. So we backed out. And I went back the next day, couldn't find nothing. Went back the next day, couldn't find nothing. And finally, the third day, I walked up on him. I could smell him. He was about 20 yards from where we had stopped tracking. He had crawled underneath a briar hammock and died. And so I was able to get his head, get his horns and all. But he was a right nice buck. You know, the first one ever with a bow and arrow. And this one here, that was when I killed last year. I got him on video. You know, that was the... That was the nine point that I killed down there at my dog club with the old 1100 Magnum last year. You know, if he'd have had a little bit more mass to his horns, I'd have got him mounted, you know, a full head mount. But I just went ahead and done a, just a, a home bodied, you know, European skull mount on him. He was a real wide buck. You know, he was a right nice deer. And I'd get a little something put on top of the gun, see. Stick him back up there without knocking everything over. That's me and Slim out there on the river fishing. But that's all of them. That's all I got right now. The goal for this year is to maybe get one more buck to put on the wall and maybe another duck or two. You know, we doing a little fishing right now. Might, might end up catching me another fish to put on the wall. Maybe a big old sheep head or something to stick up there. You know, I never thought about getting a sheep head mounted up till recently. I've caught several of them over 10 pounds that would have been plenty big enough to put on the wall. But, you know, back in them days, Daddy didn't care nothing about it. He, he wanted to mount him, all right? He wanted to mount him on a plate. Play him out and eat that sucker. But this is Big Pencil, and we will be back with another one soon.